Summer is winding down, making this the perfect time for a camp story. Summer's not winding down. I feel like it just began. Well, judging by that tan you've got there, you made the most out of your summer, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to the camp. The subject of our next story takes place for one week every year at a very special place called Brigadoon Village and in partnership with the Atlantic Province's Special Education Authority. It takes place on the shores of Aylesford Lake in Annapolis Valley, Nova Scotia. They call it Camp See Ya. It's a one-week sleepover camp for kids who are blind or visually impaired. I gotta love that cheeky name. <laughs> Absolutely. Halifax's Laura Bain met up with a young man who plans to attend it for the very first time. Yeah, probably the hard part is making sure you don't forget anything. Packing for camp can be tricky. I don't know what's what and what's where and where's what. You need lots of options. Hayden, do you have your underwear and your socks packed? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Nine-year-old Hayden Denowden and his mother, Cheyenne Dantremont, aren't leaving anything to chance. So we'll have to bring some uh, swimming shorts. Hayden, what are you excited about for camp? Uh, everything. It'll be a week full of activities. Okay, Hayden, that's it. Let's take it outside. Okay. He's expressed that he's nervous, which this is something new for him, so, you know, I would be nervous as well, but he's also excited. Hayden, how do you feel about going to a camp where the other kids are visually impaired too? Excited. And how come? Because I get to meet other people like me. Camp Sia runs out of Brigadoon Village, a non-profit recreational facility that offers programs for children, youth, and families living with a chronic illness or condition. Camp Brigadoon Summer Director Tiffany McGinnis explains. Camp Sia is one of the 13 camps that we put on at Brigadoon, um, and it's specifically for campers who are living with visual impairments. Kids from ages 7 to 17 come from all over Atlantic Canada to do the typical camp stuff. Everything from swimming and boating on the lake to drama... The crystal is gone! ...and art classes. Before each camp, staff make sure the facility is fully accessible. Tiffany tells us some of the considerations specific to Camp Sia. So that means um, making sure that our signs are high contrast. It means brailing all of our cabin signs to make sure that campers can, can read what is going on inside of that building. Um, it means kind of highlighting and labeling ledges uh, with like colored tape and bright colors uh, to make sure that they'll be able to see where the sidewalk stops or where there's a slant or an incline. We're really promoting independence and, and kind of being able to navigate the world without too much guiding is a, a big part of that. All of these accessibility features ensure campers can just have fun. And that's important to parents like Hayden's mom, Cheyenne. I just feel like he'll be keeping up with his peers and having a lot of fun doing things that um, they can all do comfortably together. We catch up with Hayden on his second to last day at camp at the archery range. Camp counselor Sebastian Buck says he's seen a big change in Hayden since he arrived. Hayden's great. He came to us and he was so shy and he was quiet. But I could still see he was excited. He was excited that it was all new. He's just a bit nervous. And he just opened up. And now he's having fun every single day. He's doing all, all sorts of new stuff. Spin, spin, spin the bowl with the cooking ingredients. Other campers are taking part in a dress rehearsal for a play that involves a treasure, a princess, and a cast of treasure seekers. Arts programmer John O'Toole says when it comes to creating an accessible play, engaging the other senses is key. We try to use a lot of descriptive language to describe what's going on in the scene, so if people aren't able to see it, they can try to imagine it. And then we also try to touch on other senses as well, like uh, smell and just like, what is the smell of this scene? Or what are you hearing in this scene as well? So it starts to kind of mold them all together so you can really paint the picture in your head and you don't necessarily need to see what's being done on stage. Tiffany says art class is another area where Camp Sia takes an accessible approach. They try and focus on doing something that's maybe a little bit more tactile or doing things that incorporate the other senses. Three, two, ah! Today, Camp Sia is running a carnival. 
fun-loving counselors volunteer to get soaked in unique ways. A reverse dunk tank and taking wet sponges to the face. And no summer carnival is complete without a ride down the slip and slide. Just the focus is having fun, making sure the extraordinary, extraordinary kids get to be ordinary for a bit, and just get to enjoy everything. This is camper Sonnet Boudreaux's fourth time at Camp Sia. I like the atmosphere here. It's uh, really, uh, it's great. I like meeting uh, new people, and I like to spend time with my friend. I like pretty much everything. Tiffany says the shared bonds the campers make during the week can be transformative. So coming here, they get to meet other people who have that shared experience. Um, they can talk about that for the first time when, other, when often they're not able to discuss those things with people who really understand, which forms really, really strong bonds be be like between our campers. And it's kind of builds that really wonderful sense of community to make sure that they understand that they're not alone. It's so great to shine the spotlight on a camp that has removed all the barriers. It sure is. I agree with what the director said about summer camp. It can be a transformative experience. Yeah, I've always believed we are more capable than we may realize. And sometimes we just need the right environment, the right encouragement, and the right challenges to find that out. Camp is a wonderful place to experience that kind of growth. Wow, Steve, that was, uh, that was really deep. What? I, I'm not that goofy all the time. I have a sensitive side, too.